IBM has revealed its top five big predictions and innovation that will change the world in the next five years to come. This is their most recent five and five series, which they've been doing for years now, in the big changes they think will come to the industry and that they'll also, in their capacity, help to facilitate. Now, all five of these predictions have one common theme, and that is artificial intelligence, which leads me to believe that IBM has sunk a lot of money into artificial intelligence and is trying to create a self-fulfilling well, prophecy. what exactly can IBM do in their capacity? Of course it's going to be something related to AI or, or computing. It's, and a, it's about steering public knowledge and... and um, and public thought in the direction that they are already headed. So, yes. I mean, it's great. Well, it's it's to have a go for it, IBM. Which we are having. It yeah. doesn't necessarily need to be positive. So let's start our list with the first one. The classroom will learn you. So they're hoping that software will help imitate what a teacher does over the course of a year. And a teacher over the course of a year will learn who you are, how you learn, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and kind of, if they're a good teacher, uh, tailor their lessons in that way to you. And that's what they're hoping software will be able to do. This one is all about uh, data collection, mm -hmm. about gathering information about students and, in theory, tailoring the lessons and the syllabus uh, towards that individual student. It's, um, I guess it's what No Child Left Behind should have been, mm -hmm. not, not lowering the bar to the lowest common denominator, but fracturing the bar so that each child achieves the goals that they should be achieving. Yes. Um, is this a good use of data collection? I mean, it says it's using longitudinal data like test scores, attendance, student behavior to identify sooner which kids have, you know, dyslexia, which kids are gifted and should be in different programs, which kids, you know, err towards English or, or science or math and, you know, give them the best school experience that they can. Uh, I have a feeling that schools are going to take that data and expand upon it with social media presence and identify which kids might, you know, be dangerous, which kids, you know, might be bullies, which kids, you know, have proclivities towards certain behaviors. Um, we don't know that for a fact as being one of the things that could come from this if it is implemented. Though we do know IBM has sunk about, I believe, ten billion dollars with a B into analytics and studying analytics and with here it's saying their goal is to help kids graduate or, or help people uh, be able to achieve their educations more efficiently. I, two out of three adults in the world don't have the equivalent of a high school education and they, they're saying they're hoping to correct that though that was a startling statistic by the way. That is a very weird statistic that I did not know existed. Yeah. Um, though I'm wondering if this is a the, the main way they're going to use this data in analytics this is to discover one, dyslexia. And this is the one of the five you. ideas that I have the most hope for mm -hmm. because I think money and science and should all be sunk into education. Mm -hmm. Is that establishing a, a well informed and intellectual, you know, next generation is the key to solving all of our problems. And every time that school programs get cut or the money gets taken out of education, I cry both inside and outside. I'm a very emotional person when it yeah, comes to I education. So. <laughs> So uh, I think this one shows the most The most altruism, promise. Yes. I think, out of all of them. Which brings us to our next one. Buying local will beat online. They think that the world of online shopping will change in the next five years. Right now, uh, many brick and mortar stores have closed because of competition online. Read into any bookstore. Cute pun, huh? Read into any bookstore's uh, demise and failure thanks to, to the better deals and, and shipping on Amazon. But they think they can beat the two-day shipping promise and the customer service aspect in stores, but with the help of AI. This one makes me laugh. Okay. It, we've got ideas such as innovations for physical stores to make buying local turn out better. Stores will be able to anticipate what the shopper wants and needs most. They'll have a salesperson ready to meet you at a certain aisle already predicting what you're going to need and what questions you're going to have. See, I don't... I, that makes me kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, a little bit. It's like that scene in Minority Report where his eye gets scanned and they like have targeted advertising ready for him. Welcome, like, oh, you sir. purchased this. What about this? It's like I get that that's a sidebar on Amazon and Facebook, and I can ignore it. But when someone's like actually talking to me, telling me what I should be buying, that's intrusive. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that local, like, I support local business oh, and brick yeah. and mortar stores. I used to work in one, one that recently went out of business. It was a, it was a crying shame, but they got pushed out of business by Apple. It was impossible for them to survive. 
So it goes. That's the risk you run when you're a small business. Do you see this as the savior for small businesses? No, because I, I feel this like the death knell. Small businesses aren't going to be able to afford they're, this technology. I, I don't think they're going to be able to afford having that associate and that technology and that that thing to pop up on an online. This is Best store. Buy. This is Walmart. This is you know yeah, Target. This, this will most likely help big box stores. Um, I don't see this getting implemented to positive review. I mean, people don't like it now when their data is collected to make targeted advertising for them on the internet. How, what are they going to do when there's a person in their face doing that? They're going, to, they're going to be upset, to say the least. And stores, I say this, stores don't really care about new technology for the convenience of the consumer. They care about new technology to make more money and sell more stuff. So they're not going to use this technology altruistically. They're going to try to make you buy stuff you weren't intending on buying. That's how I see this like real life targeted advertising. It reminds me a little bit of something that's already in place now, which is using location services to offer coupons. Yes. Yes, that's what I see it as. And that wasn't super successful uh, as and, a gambit and at the all. Club cards that see what people absolutely need and what brands they prefer, in the guise of giving you a discount with that club card, they're able to see which products are most popular and then jack the prices of those up. So I have very little hope for this one. Number three of IBM's innovations is doctors will use your DNA to help keep you well. What they want to do is use their computers to help doctors understand how a tumor could affect a patient down to their DNA and help tailor treatments and medications uh, to that DNA. I mean, I've had some experience with, you know, seeing people go through cancer treatments and you know, doctors trying to find diagnoses you for- You can see that like in even medical procedurals. Like the it blows my mind that we aren't doing more with stuff like this. Mm -hmm. How right now the treatment is, we'll give you this drug, we'll see if it works, we'll wait a little while, it didn't work, let's try another one, let's try another one, let's try another one. Like if we can tailor every treatment to persons, in, like I don't know if DNA will unlock that answer, but it certainly sounds like a really good start. It seems like it's, we consider this a breakthrough, but it, it's, it's the kind of idea that we think, why is that already not in motion? We've had the genome mapped for years, you know? Mm. Well, not everybody's genome, but the human genome. Like, obviously, we can run DNA tests, and if they're, you know, if cancer treatments can, you know, if we can learn anything from an individual's DNA for their specific and using cancer spe treatment, specific then protocols, we absolutely should. Yes. So, yeah, that's a pretty good one, IBM. We okay. all are on board with that. The fourth one is a digital guardian to help protect you online, which I have a little, a little trepidations about this one. Uh, what they want is for a guardian of sorts to to kind of handle your passwords for you and handle your your patterns for acting how you act online altogether and when there's uh, something out of place protect you you know how like when you go on vacation and you use your credit card and then your bank calls you and says hey are you in the Cayman no, Islands did you I make do this know purchase how and like that's cool but this is that on steroids they are watching everything that you're doing and drawing conclusions about your life building a digital you to see how your behavior is so they can track you and protect you from any kind of outlier data that, that it finds. Well, kind of their, their procedure for this is they can kind of, uh, IBM and high analytical engines can already uh, kind of understand the person you are by reading 200 of your tweets. Uh, this is kind of, it's, it's in that vein. They're trying to understand who you are by your activities, and protect you, but also monitor you very closely, which is kind of onerous. I mean, to me, this just reads like consolidation of data for the NSA. Mm. It seems like IBM is, is making I digital profiles. I would prefer to not of, have that there. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like I can do a better job of protecting myself, but that's just me. Right. Um, I mean, we speak as digitally inclined people. Mm -hmm. We know what emails not to open to get viruses. You know, you and I know that, but the vast majority of people out there don't have that kind of, sa I'm not insulting everyone, I'm saying that's pretty typical for my, you know, parents to open an email that maybe they shouldn't have. In 2012, 12 million people were the victims of fraud, of yeah, identity, identity theft. theft. Yes, so it's a rampant problem, and if there's a system set up to help these people not make such silly decisions, or not make themselves so vulnerable to identity theft, great. I don't think this is how that's going to play out. Uh, even if it, if it is often, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't know if that, that really truly has my um, you protection at heart. You want control in your hands. I want that too. 
Ideally, everyone do. would be able to do that, but not everybody can. And the last innovation from IBM number five, the city will help you live in it or it will be a smart city. Uh, this is using data or collected from people or that people give rather in this description uh, to help people to help resources go where they need to go in a city. Of course, this one does remind me a lot of the video game Watch Dogs, where we have like this whole structure in place to, to help monitor and help keep people safe, but also in the wrong hands, it might not be such a good idea. Yeah, you could think of this one like Big Brother, like security cameras everywhere, like recording everything we do. The article pitches it at like we're getting you in touch with the city officials and city planners and opening lines of dialogue and communication. I want this to do two things. I want it to facilitate emergency services, like clearly we know where the police station is. It's easy to report where the emergency is. Why aren't all the traffic lights in between those like ready to go. Yeah, it shouldn't be that a police car approaches a light and then it turns for that police car. We can do this much better. There's a grid, motherfucker. Use it. You don't love sirens? And I want traffic to work better. Traffic is so bad. I really think there has to be a better way to do it. I know that I only have a tangential understanding of how you know, the flow of traffic moves around any particular city. When I worked as a reporter for a small city called Garden Grove, I did actually visit their traffic center and they did have uh, cameras up to like see if there had been a tree fallen or there's too much traffic here. And there was a way for them to automate, uh, not automate, to, to give this section a green light or red light, whatever, and keep a certain flow to help traffic improve. Uh, but it did not rely on data. This, this would rely on data to help them uh, automate that system where the resources should be, where the... Live, ever-changing algorithms. That's yes. what I want to see. Move me around the city better. Move everybody around better. What do you think of IBM's five innovations for the next five years? Are they too intrusive? Will they help mankind live better? Uh, let us know in the comments below and what you think should happen in the next five years, innovation-wise, and please be sure to subscribe.